Chapter 8, Donovan's Disappointment After lunch, Donovan set his jar on the dining room table and explained his problem to his grandma. When he finished talking, he sat back in his chair and waited for her solution. Grandma reached over and plucked a few slips of paper from Donovan's jar. She looked at a slip of paper and laughed. Donnie, Grandma said, do you remember when Pooh traded your ice cream cone for a broken kite? I won't ever forget that, Donovan said, frowning. Grandma showed him the word bamboozle, and they both laughed. And this word emporium, Grandma said, shaking her head slowly, it makes me think of long ago when I was a young girl. I used to buy licorice at Mr. McCready's store. She selected another word from the jar. Donnie, where did you get this word? she asked. She was surprised to see kaleidoscope written on the slip of paper. I haven't seen one of those in years. I wonder if kids still play with them. I have never seen a kaleidoscope, Grandma, but I saw a picture of one in an old catalog. That's where I found the word, Donovan answered. Grandma read several more words before she looked at Donovan over the rims of her wire glasses. Donnie, she said, you sure have got yourself a treasure here. This is a wonderful collection of words. Donovan smiled and sat up a little straighter. Grandma's praise made him feel good, but Donovan still needed a solution to his problem. Do you see my problem, Grandma, he asked. I thought of getting a larger jar, but that would only get full, too. Well, honey, what do other collectors do when their collections grow too large, she asked. I don't know, Donovan said. He thought about it for a minute. Well... Pooh collects buttons, but he never gets too many because he trades them for other things. Like what, Grandma asked. Sometimes he trades for a poster or for a few comics. Once he traded three buttons for a t-shirt, Donovan explained. You think you could do that, Grandma asked. No, Grandma, I can't think of anything I could get worth my words, he said. And I really don't want to give any of my words away, he added. Grandma settled back in her chair. She didn't say anything for a long while, and Donovan began to feel a little uneasy. Maybe, just maybe, his grandma didn't have a solution. She dipped her hand back into the word jar and pulled out a few more words. There are some words in this jar that I know folks living here could use, she said. Donovan slipped to the edge of his chair and wondered what this his grandma was going to say. She continued, now I like the word persnickety. That word fits Ms. Mary Lou to a T. That woman has just have to have everything she does just right. Grandma slipped another word from her jar. Cantankerous. That's a perfect word for our guard, Bill Gutt. I bet he argues with flies. Grandma laughed and Donovan joined him. He loved the sound of his grandma's laughter. After they caught their breaths, Grandma said, I enjoyed your words, Donnie. I'm sure a lot of people would. She smiled at him and waited to see if he had something to say. Grandma... I'd be glad. I'd be glad to have any of your friends see my words, but they couldn't keep them. I'd have to have them back for my collection. Donovan's voice was firm. Well, I'm... Oops. Well, I'm sorry if I didn't help you. Oh, Grandma, that's okay, Donovan answered, trying hard not to show his disappointment. He didn't want to, he didn't want to hurt Gra his Grandma's feelings. Besides, he said, getting up from the table, if we don't have a solution today, maybe you'll think of something tomorrow. Grandma helped him with his boots and his hat and coat. Donovan picked up his word jar and tucked it firmly under his arm. Grandma walked with him to the door. Take care of yourself, word gatherer, she said, hugging him close.